All right, very good morning. It is Friday 31st of May. Hope you're doing well. Um, quick overview then what we're going to cover. We're going to look at obviously the latest news about uh, Trump and Mexico and that's created risk off uh, market movement overnight and, and certainly it's going to be the focal point as we go into uh, full UK and European market open. Uh, so we'll review that. We're also going to look at some Chinese data that came out overnight. Of course it was the PMI data, uh, manufacturing and services and, and more broadly speaking uh, still remaining heavily in contraction for China in particular on their employment sub constituent number. Uh, so we'll have a look at a couple of graphics to, to make sense of that. Uh, and then also a look at oil, some comments out of Clarida, who's the vice chair at the Fed, which I think were, were quite important as well. So that's what's on the agenda. Uh, and then we'll hand over to Sam and he can look at the, the charts. So quick look at the general sentiment. As you can see here, we've got quite clear risk off tone to proceedings. Um, the Bund in fixed income markets has gapped up and is up about 33 ticks. You can see here the US 10 year in the bottom right hand corner is up 13 and a half ticks with the, with the pop, if you like, coming overnight session. Um, if I bring up the S&P here and I start putting the S&P on a slightly shorter time frame, you can see this is when the news came out last night and the S&P sold off immediately on the back of it. Uh, and again, we'll go into the headlines in more detail. Uh, in kind then, gold elevated uh, and European stock futures, particularly the DAX, will be an interesting one to watch. You can see here the futures gap down, broke through yesterday's low uh, and just coming up to the cash open in about 20 minutes. Uh, that'll definitely be one to keep an eye on just given the direct implications for the automakers. Uh, I believe I heard a stat this morning that there's eight EU manufacturers that operate with facilities within Mexico uh, and that does include VW uh, being one. So definitely you would expect that to weigh on the DAX uh, given the sector kind of profiling of the, that particular industry. Uh, currency wise though, not too much reaction. Um, tends to be fairly isolated at the moment at least, not really seeing much dollar reaction to the latest news. So the Dixie's flat and that is broadly reflected in both major pairs in Euro dollar uh, and cable. Um, but otherwise, generally risk off start to proceedings, overnight reaction if you like to the, to the headline of which came out which was this. Uh, so let me read you through a couple of points here to uh, surmise what's happened. President Trump vowed to impose a 5% tariff on Mexican goods until the country stops immigrants from entering the U.S. illegally. Uh, the tariff would take effect on June 10th, quote, until such time illegal migrants coming through Mexico and into our country, uppercase, stop, uh, was what he tweeted um, yesterday. So yeah, definitely something which um, you know, reading between the lines here, of course, you know, if you watched the rerun, rerun of his speech, you know, this, I actually found it quite interesting. If you step away from markets for a second, and you think about the political angle, you know, one of the things that's been, uh, and it's absolutely backfired for established political parties, in particular those of a, of a more centre ground trying to appease both sides of the argument. Uh, and taking Theresa May as an example, you know, sitting on the fence trying to compromise just is not cutting it at the moment with the just general electorate. Uh, and listening to Trump, you know, he is a good salesman in that sense. Uh, the way he was talking it up, making America great again, obviously stopping full illegal migrants coming into Mexico by next week or so, that absolutely is never going to happen. But that doesn't matter at all. I mean, if you listen to him and the way he delivers it, I almost want to put on the manga hat because, you know, that's how well he spins it. But that's the point. You know, the point is all of this is a political ploy to try and garner um, you know, kind of sentiment around the key issues. And remember, the two key issues for 2020 for Trump and a second term is trade and immigration. And it's those two things that are right at the epicenter of the main factors and forces moving markets at the moment. 
you've got trade with China and don't forget we were looking at the stats yesterday in the briefing with Mexico Mexico an absolute key that's the second biggest country of which the US import goods from you know so and then immigration of course it's kind of gone a bit quiet on that but obviously it's uh, one of the focal points of, uh, of his policies uh, and as much as that went quiet after the government shut down on the border war funding you can very much expect that issue to return to the table very quickly uh, as he starts to kind of ramp things up so yeah definitely this move it, it dampens sentiment the tariff man strikes again and again in a week where we've had um, concerns about the elevation and potential retaliation from China who really have kind of changed their tone given what's been happening with the breakdown in the trade situation with the targeting of of tech firms this is just another you know kind of uh, element on the global scale that's kind of dented sentiment and so having a look here the S&P 500 I know Sam will look at this in more detail but there's obviously this is the longer daily continuation chart this is the thing that we were looking at where you've got the 200 daily moving average on the red line um, and then you've got that uh, trend line as well and we briefly right at the beginning of the week had a real test of that broke below it but closed back above yesterday held above the level but obviously this latest development has helped bump things back down again so technically speaking um, does open up potentially a bit of clean airspace now for a push back down and technically you know 1237 three quarters you've kind of got uh, these previous levels here a little choppy though really that zone 37 to 22 i think looks like an area of of stronger support but don't forget that means we've got to move a decent 30 40 points lower from where we are at the moment whether that happens today or not i guess need yet to be seen one thing i would say is that americans would have been um, you know, it was late in the day. The move didn't come until, you know, gone midnight uh, London time. So by that, what I mean is when Americans come in, they still probably need to price this in to some degree. So, you know, I definitely would be mindful of that. So keeping an eye on gold as well, of course. Gold here, we just, you know, we're coming back to the $1,300 handle again. Uh, we had a test at the R1, uh, which is about one and a half bucks shy of the figure. And so definitely... You know this kind of risk off trade on these latest fundamental developments likely to fire things up a little bit in the gold market uh, and again i'm sure sam will be looking at, at this a bit more closely just looking at that kind of trend line from the high of the year that was printed back in feb retested on the 14th of may and that's coming in as kind of maybe a potential area to have a look at as we come up to the 1300 dollars psychological level A um, few other things then, let's just have a look. Obviously, Mexican peso uh, reacting in immediately on the back of the latest news. Uh, the time stamp at the bottom is not London. Presumably this is, um, well, I'm not sure what the actual time frame that is, but um, potentially local time. But moving 2.4%, I think the, the peso weakened on the back of this. I think this was after about a week ago that he had dropped the still tariffs but certainly right back into the mix now uh, so you know, local assets are going to suffer the other thing that's obviously not helping the situation for the open uh, is the fact that this is a graphic of the chinese uh, manufacturing pmi data so if you remember um, one thing is here what you have these various different colored lines is the orange line here is the um, the actual headline kind of composite PMI number you can see we moved into quite deep contraction at one point sub a 46 level before coming ramping back post the, the Lunar New Year holiday but then we've fallen again uh, to where we are kind of at the moment so well actually this is this area here what I'm looking at the slightly lighter orange line so again dipped contraction so excuse me that is this line contraction just below 50 we got back above it flirted right on the level but we've moved back into contraction is the point the orange line at the bottom uh, this is new export orders uh, and one of the other ones that people are looking at quite closely is this is the um, factory employment gauge which fell to its lowest since basically the financial crisis printing at 47 so definitely um, 
the Chinese economy still very much feeling the bite of this continuation from what really has been impacting their local economy through the last several months. So despite the uh, recovery that we've had in Q1 in general global market sentiment and some stabilization in you know, a few of the asset prices, one thing we have been seeing certainly over the last week or so is the yuan has conti- is renewed its weakening kind of pattern, getting closer to that key threshold seven level. And these kind of forward-looking PMI indicators are tipping negative again, uh, and to points of which when looking at the subcomponents like employment, as we've seen here, it's something that we haven't seen at levels in about 10 years. So what does that mean for, for general uh, global growth concerns? Well, they have to be paired back again, and this certainly has ramifications for the price of crude oil. Now, it's been <laughs> May, the month of May, it being uh, the 31st, looks set to be the worst month for WTI crude uh, since November. So just having a look here, you can see really the market when it came raging back and you know the Fed came in uh, to save the day, altered their communication to become dovish, uh, the various different you know, fiscal uh, intervention on behalf of China, <coughs> both government and central bank level created that really strong about turn and we had decent four months of persistent gains in crude but yeah you can see here the the WTI monthly price change down heavily from what we've printed over the last couple of months and looking at the the crude chart on a daily continuation you know crude acts really nicely when it starts breaking some of these longer standing technical points of significance on the way up it was exactly the same playing uh, round figures uh, the fib retracement of the sell-off in q4 uh, and also some of the previous price action uh, and you can see here when the market really plummeted back on the 23rd of may consolidated exactly where we did before the breach of the technical levels, I mean, these levels are here have, are not put on this morning. They've remained the case. And you can see how the market kind of f- quick fire falls back down to the next point of significance. And certainly we're in that test of that zone at the moment around that 5575. That was the initial, you can see here, resistance, the 38% fib of that Q4 sell off. Uh, acted as the the support and platform then for the push that we saw in February March, and now consequently turns to a key area of support here where we're trading at the moment. But as you can see, going through May, you know quite a sharp depreciation that we've had as the the whole global growth concerns return and the trade war globally starts to sour as Trump starts to kind of up the up the ante. Uh, as he goes into kind of full political kind of run into the uh, the election phase. One thing that I think is important is this. This was a comment out of this chap, uh, Richard Clarida, who's, who's the vice chair at the Fed. Uh, and he said that the Federal Reserve could cut rates if the outlook takes an unexpected turn for the worse as he vowed to be nimble in ensuring the US expansion continues. Now, you know, th- if I was Donald Trump, this is absolute music to my ears because it means then that basically I'm getting what I want, which is I can play hardball and if the markets do respond negatively enough, well, the Fed are here quite clearly committing that they're gonna step in and do what's necessary to continue the expansion of the economy, i.e not just hold interest rates as the current dot plot would suggest they're going to cut and that's definitely what the markets are pricing towards the end of the year Uh, and certainly that gives i think trump wiggle room to be quite aggressive in his tone on this trade side because he's got the ultimate get out of jail free card which would be the fed to help prop the market up and let's not forget trump can then change the tone cut a deal not aggressive as complete um a complete stop on illegal immigration but he gets a little bit more border wall funding perhaps to appease then congress uh, to stop what he's doing and then net net he gains a concession and it's a political win 
and the markets then respond as he comes off the gas, so to speak. So, yeah, I still, you know, I don't think, more broadly speaking, that although everything I've talked about in this briefing is, is quite negative, um, even though I feel like the market does need to come back a little further, particularly in the equity space, I don't think this is the beginning of the end. I actually think this is just part of the phase of a, of a correction of which undoubtedly will turn. Obviously, it's the timing which is key, and uh, I think Sam's going to look at some longer time frames on, say, the equity markets of where it could be quite interesting on those pullbacks. But the point being is that from a, a fundamental narrative, uh, the powers that be, let's say, i.e. Trump, uh, he knows what he's doing and he knows what he needs to achieve on a specific time frame of which we as market participants are fully aware of uh, is the point. All right, quick look at the calendar. What have we got? Now we've had the Chinese data, of course, come out. So uh, I wouldn't worry about German retail sales numbers. That's really insignificant uh, on a regular basis. Um, the German state CPIs will be coming out momentarily. Uh, obviously, as per usual, these are littered throughout the morning. Uh, could be quite interesting to keep an eye on. I think, remember last month, I think they did jump up from their prior month, and that did lead to some slight short-term appreciation of the euro at the time. Um, Italian GDP, uh, final readings. So uh, not to be, I mean, Italy in focus, yes, both politically, yes has been in technical recession, so GDP, uh, quite interesting, but these are final readings, so it shouldn't be anything too surprising. Going further forward, uh, mortgage approvals, again, not really a market move for sterling, so I wouldn't worry about that. And as far as, I'd say, sterling risk around political developments on Brexit, I'd kind of classify those as very uh, relatively limited at this point, because where we're at at the moment is that really there's a bigger, much more dominating macro theme, which is the trade developments that we've discussed, but also the fact that the timeline has kind of been drawn out now uh, for this leadership process to take place. Going into the afternoon, um, we get US um, personal income, we've got core PCE data, Canadian GDP, Chicago PMI, uh, which is always quite interesting, coming out to states, uh, University of Michigan, but that's a final reading, and then Baker Hughes rig count for any of the oil traders. Um, Speaker-wise, Feds Bostick and Feds Williams, the latter of which is a voter, uh, and there will be prepared text, it looks like, and is speaking on monetary policy theory, so it could be quite an interesting one to look at. Uh, typically, Williams having a more hawkish stance on policy. Um, so, yeah, overall, again, I think it would be European morning largely derived from the fallout of what's happened from overnight. Nothing too much here from a scheduled point of view. Uh, on that basis, it's definitely more of a probably US-centric session once again with data, but also how does the US stock market react to what we've had, particularly with some of these levels that we looked at in the spoos being taken out already. How does the US react when they come in? I think will be important for how the week finishes. All right, that is it for me. I'll wish you a good day ahead uh, and a good weekend. Thanks very much. <clears throat> Morning guys, hope everyone uh, is doing well and had a, a good week so far, so coming into well, the last day of the, the month and week, uh, it'll be interesting to see where some of these charts end up of course on the, the longer time frames, so I think worth talking uh, to start in, uh, I should say, with the, with the S&P, let's put this on a uh, longer time frame, I mean you can see the move from last night. Uh, keeping an eye on those lows just now, and especially with the decks about to kick on in five minutes, be interesting to, to keep an eye on exactly what happens around there. On the uh, the longer time frame, you can see here, and it's got the the trend line and the 200-day moving average. Absolutely, would would be looking at that uh, as well, and, and seeing where we we close the week and the month, uh, as mentioned. You've also got the you know, the 27-22 area, 37 as well, that 15-point zone. I think it's a, a pretty key one. From a technical point of view, I like the look of it as a, as a place to get long. I mean, I do think Trump knows exactly what he's doing, so the safest bet here may well be to just wait for you know a game-changing comment, technical push higher, uh, and uh, and get in and hold your breath. 
Uh, but looking here, you've also got the, the fib from last year's low to this year's high. Uh, that comes in around there, the 0.382, just below 27.22. Uh, as well you've got trend line from the previous all-time high that goes through uh, that sort of uh, area you can see here the second third test breakthrough was in March and then that will come in in the mix there as well so 8th of March low 0.382 fib trend line from previous all-time high not a bad level uh, technically to get in but of course if there's you know further developments like there were last night the technical levels aren't going to hold too firm but it's, some, it's certainly something to, to keep an eye on uh, maybe like Ant was saying not today but over the coming days or weeks uh, as well but with the uh, with the equities on their lows at the moment we're keeping an eye on the DAX of course to see uh, how that does react looking at the euro relatively quiet all week to be honest I mean the the ranges of these moves have been very small especially from sort of the London trading hours. Uh, from a, a range perspective, R1 and those highs looks okay. I'll just be always slightly careful on these ones just to see how it uh, gets to R1. So right now, as it stands, yesterday's high and R1, really good resistance level, risk reward looks good. Uh, I'll just be keeping an eye how we react to this potential trend line. If it finds uh, resistance, comes back down, but then really pushes on very quickly, well, that would be the key that I don't necessarily want to get in this trade. Uh, also, above where we're uh, trading, uh, around the R2, you've got some nice highs as well previously. Uh, quite a lot of resistance, nice resistance above where we're trading. Uh, of course, this market, if we just zoom to the left-hand side, and you can see this is last Thursday's reaction on that multi-year low. We're keeping an eye on that, obviously, into the close of the week. If we were to have some... Uh, strong uh, dollar, uh, a strong dollar, I should say, today, and, and break below that and close would be pretty key. Uh, something to, to focus on again as we go into the back end of the session. The pound, uh, having a look here, it's uh, all about for me anyway. The the longer term, the longer term picture here. If we just remove the pivots just to to clean things up a bit. You can see that 126 handle on the futures that we've we've been talking about. The trend line from 2000. 17 low that we had back in January and it's just hiding behind my camera at the moment so I'll just put that on you can see that's just been tested little false breakout of that you've also got the low that we had back on the 11th of December so key level key area where we close the week will be important but like with equities a fundamental development and that could be uh, who's getting there in the hot seat at number 10 we could be absolutely key for deciding where this market goes rather than a technical level of support but all things considered it's a good one uh, right now that I would uh, would have marked up the yen yesterday uh, well yesterday morning we had that break didn't we of the the trend line which was a really good opportunity if you were trading at those hours of course uh, with everything that happened yesterday equities while they recovered in the morning and into the back end of the session you can see the exact same uh, well the opposite here move uh, we then pushed back above and we're now trading on the, the highest we've been for quite some time uh, but just be aware of of these this area this is now 480 chart and you can see not far from the high that we had back on the 13th and you also got a potential trend line from starting on the 24th of March just above there so quite a, a key level to keep an eye on just above where we're trading here again on the yen against the dollar uh, another safe haven market to focus on obviously the yen being one of those but gold really did push push on as well quite uh, again a bit of resistance above where we're trading you know noticeably just above where you here you've got the 1300 handle 1301 there's some decent uh, resistance we've just gone through what was the low of the 15th uh, as well so Along with those trend lines that Ant mentioned from the, the previous highs, do any of those come in around this area? Yes, you can see you've got a potential one here that starts on the 25th to the 13th of, of this month. Uh, we're keeping a, a close eye on that, definitely into the back end of the week. I've said it all week uh, as well with, with, with gold. It is a tricky market at the moment to really call the direction. Every time you think it's coming down, you get that failed test. And, you know, is it, are we now trying to extend through I think maybe a break of this trend line could be that key uh, to get us going uh, in the right direction if you're a gold bull of course but as mentioned if equities do find support 
uh, we could see a bit of a push higher. And of course, with Clarida's comments overnight, a bit of dollar weakness may have well uh, impacted that move uh, as well on gold late yesterday. Uh, having a look at, uh, at oil, obviously a decent move yesterday uh, to the downside, and that's continued to an extent this morning already down 78 ticks from the open be keeping an eye on uh, starting on the you have to wait for me to find the exact there we go lower the fifth I've got written down a uh, trend line from that oh, not an ellipse just keeping an eye on this trend line that you can see we broke through if I get it right there you go we broke through yesterday evening you want a line in the sand for you know what point can this market maybe turn intraday or well, you've got one there keeping an eye you can see that second test just above my camera now just above it there on the, uh, the 23rd really good support yesterday before that overnight breakthrough we came back to retest it really nice level you got $56 on the futures just above there as well uh, but just keeping an eye that could be your your cue to maybe get out short uh, if you're still really holding the position uh, but really nice line in the sand for, for traders to keep an eye on. And of course, those longer term levels that, that Ant talks about. You know, if we can, um, you know, keep pushing down, you know, where could be the, the level where we start to find support? I mean, just purely from a support resistance point, you have 55.12, which would, I know, be interesting to some people. The 52.59, you can see all these uh, lows from here. That would certainly, uh, you know, be a place where people might attempt to, to get in. Uh, but you know things probably do have to change um, certainly with the equity markets for there to be a full on recovery uh, of course these markets very correlated uh, at the moment uh, as well as usual any uh, questions do do let us know um, we'll have a quick look over at the DAX before uh, just wrapping up just to see how it's opening with that increase in volume we can see just over the last few minutes is breaking that low there so keeping an eye then on US equities as well around those lows the Nasdaq they're down the S&P looking very identical uh, if they were to, to break we see you know the idea of a uh, a big push lower to 27 22 40 point move well, you never know uh, you never know but I hope you all have a, a good trading day and a, and a great weekend from everyone uh, at the Amplify team